So this is just a quick demo uh, to demonstrate an example of non-conformance uh, using K2. Uh, I've got a, a around non-conformance reporting. Effectively, uh, it opens up a KV smart form where we can go and fill in the details. Uh, some of the features of add-on to this particular one is the ability to uh, save it as a draft, so you can sort of fill it in, save it as a draft, and then come and load your saved drafts up as well. Uh, you can also go and search for certain projects uh, that it's related to. So as an example, I'm just going to do a full out search and just go and choose uh, a little project over here that it's going to be related to. I'll job number and a couple of details around this uh, non-conformance. So I'm going to use a uh, little mapping, sort of looking at the location of where, uh, where we might have picked up the sort of detail and then complete some of the details of the non-conformance inside of here. couple of uh, items to select upon and then who it's going to be actually issued to to deal with this. So in this particular example uh, I'm going to actually go and issue that to myself. So it picks me up, pulls in my, my details uh, since it's also uh, it's issued to and issued by me as well so it's, that's been automatically pulled in and then that's been pulled in based upon uh, who I've selected. So we're going to go ahead and submit this off. And what that does is it now goes and starts a business process. So the process that's going to, that's, that it's going to run through uh, is this process up here. So let's go and track it. So there it is. So we'll look at what's happening in the process. So it's been submitted off. It goes uh, for review. So the next user in the process, who is me, uh, can open that up and, and complete the review. It then goes for approval. Once it's approved, uh, it then goes into a little state where it'll loop through all of the actions that have been added and start a sub-workflow process for each of those actions. Once all those actions are completed, it then goes back to uh, um, the person that's been allocated to uh, just to review and then mark that as closed and then that process is completed. So a very simple example of it, but uh, it shows some, some of the uh, um, advanced things like uh, having these underlying sub-processes based upon the detail that's been selected. So let's go and have a look at that. What you'll see is on my task list I've now got a submitted for review for that NCR that started off, number 90. So let's go and open that up and have a look at the form that's inside there. So first of all a little review history and I can see any revisions uh, of this uh, process that's come through and what people's comments have been on it. I can see the detail that was originally filled in and it's now all read only for me. And then I've got another section that's now appeared around the immediate actions that have been performed. So I can go and fill in the uh, immediate actions that have taken place, uh, maybe who uh, who it was actioned by. So in this case, I'll say Thunderbolt. I'll say he did it uh, on that particular date and perhaps they were also closed on that date. Then I can continue inside here and add some preventative actions as well. Now these are the ones that will kick off a sub-process for each of those to make sure that uh, those actions are then completed. So let's add a couple of those. So I'm just going to say uh, um, check the wiring, wiring uh, make sure it doesn't happen again. And in this particular case, I'm going to allocate that to, uh, to uh, Ian uh, Worthington. I'm going to ask him to complete that by tomorrow. Then I'm going to add another action, uh, some other things that need to take place, and I'm going to allocate that to myself in this particular case, and I want that completed by Wednesday. So I've added those two actions, and a couple other details I can fill in, for example, certain things that have been approved, uh, maybe assign that to a specific approver. In this case, I'm going to uh, allocate that to Ian Wellington in this case as well, give that an approval date. And uh, if there was a client approval, could pull that in as well. So um, completed all sections. Uh, note and maybe some information that I want to add into this process that people should note uh, before I go ahead and submit that for approval. So that being submitted, if we go back and have a look at our workflow process, just give that a refresh. We can see it's now completed that step and it's gone for approval and that's now sitting with Ian Worthington who I marked as a person that needs to uh, needs to go and approve that. 
So in this particular case, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to, uh, I've got another browser opened that's now logged in as Ian Worthington at the top here. And what you'll see is on here is it's submitted for approval. So that process has now been allocated to him, and he can come in and open that up as well. So the first thing that Ian can see is uh, my review state, what I did, and my little comment that I left behind. Again, all the same sort of details, everything that's taken place. Uh, he's really just reviewing this information and then can decide uh, what action to take. Let's uh, go for it. So he's approving all of that and approving that particular step. So that's Ian completing that particular task. Let's minimize this again and go and look at the process. What you'll see now is that uh, it's been submit. The submit for approval was with Ian, and he actually completed that, and it's been approved. And now it's gone, and it's created a, a, a interprocess call to in those individual processes that we kicked off. I can drill down and see that, and I can see there's those two uh, non-conformance actions uh, that have taken place. And each of those I could drill down into the actual sub-process that takes place, and I can have a look at who is specifically allocated. So we had the one that was allocated to Ian. If I go back again over here, and the second one was allocated to myself. So we can see there's Igor sitting inside there. All right. So for uh, Ian's action, I'm uh, sorry for uh, for my action. I'm actually going to go and log in into a SharePoint environment, and in the SharePoint environment, I'm going to go to my task list. And you can see there, I've got do corrective action inside my task list. So here I'm just showing that that task is being surfaced up. And now uh, we, we had a look at it all being kicked off in a non-SharePoint environment. Uh, during the process, uh, I can pick up the task with inside of SharePoint if I need to as well. I can go open that task from within inside of this environment. So opening up that task, you can see it inside here, preventive action. I'm going to do this, that, and the other. I'm going to put my response all done mark that particular one as uh, completed. So we go back again to our workflow process. We give that a refresh. So our uh, corrective actions, inside of my events, I can see I had two that had started and the one has been completed. And again, drilling down into that, I can see that whole uh, um, task action is completed, as well as all the recording history of who completed and when. So that's the uh, that's the the one. If you remember, we had two. So let me go and log back in as uh, as Ian on uh, on his browser. So here he is, and you can see he's got the other action to complete over there. So just in the same way, I could complete that for my task list if we allow that, or just drill down into that specific task. He's going to complete his all done as well, and submit that off. So once those two comp tasks are completed. The uh, top-level workflow process uh, will automatically then uh, move over to the next step. So it's waiting for the two, this, this sort of step here is waiting for those two sub-actions to take place. And in this particular case, they've completed and it'll move to the uh, submitted for closure as soon as this refreshes. There we go. So that submitted for closure now is uh, just a confirmation step. Again, uh, I can see that's been allocated back to Igor again. If I go and look at my task list, it's sitting inside there. And uh, by opening that up, you can see the details once again about the process, the actions, the fact that those are now completed, and again, uh, I have now additional sections that I need to complete. So in this particular case, I've just got to write about some evidence or a reason of why I've uh, why it's completed. Perhaps go and attach uh, a specific document or a bunch of attachments to that. And over here, we've also included the, the ability to maybe go and sign that uh, uh, with maybe a digital pen on a, on a digital device like an iPad or a Surface or something along those lines. So I'm just going to mark that as all done and close that NCR and submit that off. By doing so, then completes the process. That process will then complete it. And then after that, we can obviously have that go and update or send out all the right notifications to... Uh, different people that are part of that uh, specific workflow process. So it's just a very quick example to show um, the use of uh, non-conformance uh, in, a, in a KD process. Uh, there's many different permutations of that. There's also examples of Kappa processes where, um, again, very similar process, maybe different kinds of detail and data that might need to be collected on the form uh, as, that, uh, as that process uh, uh, go, um, 
case, kicked up and goes through its motions. Thank you very much.